Alright, hello, welcome back to another Ifrit Schneid YouTube video review and today we are finally going to be reviewing the M9 Guns back version IV which is the invisible victory version of the M9 Guns back this is Curse Weber's arm slave or the normal infantry use arm slave for Mithril um, for especially for those M9 Guns back pilots this is a model kit from Bandai, 160 of skill model, Bandai 2018 made in Japan, turns back version IV, and a really nice looking box art of the M9 guns back with the Arbalest and the Melissa Mao version of the guns back at the back. So, I've really shown you the box, I've really shown you the manual, I've really shown you some of the building processes. It's now has come time for the review. Okay, so in terms of details, it's a pretty good looking model kit. It has all the details in all the right places and um, it has a ton of them. Even in places which I thought it didn't need. Um, what I mean by that is that for some model kits, uh, the, the underside of the feet does not have details but it's, it does have details at the back and the underside of the feet there and I thought that this torso piece right here wouldn't need details it could just be straight I wouldn't mind at all but there's just indents right there and it's just detailed up the wazoo there's details up everywhere so let me just give you a, a small a, a good look at it the head there's details at the front, the side, there are stickers there for the yellow, for the, the, the side Vulcans, the eyes, there are or quote unquote eyes, there's stickers there. <clears throat> maybe they're not called Vulcans, maybe they are the machine guns, I, I, I'm not too sure in the name, but I remember that the Abelus had like a, a machine gun kind of weapon or a, a Gatling gun kind of weapon at the top of the head, at the sides of the head. And uh, looking at the torso, there's details at the chest. The, near the shoulders and like I said before here as well the the shoulders as well there's much more details and I'll show you a comparison between uh, this guy and the old uh, and the Robert Damashi guns back from uh, the Melissa Mao version that there are more details here in the version IB this is because this is a little updated design of the guns back in comparison to the the uh, the first and the third season of Full Metal Panic, Full Metal Panic, and Full Metal Panic: The Second Raid, respectively. <coughs> Details at the shoulders as well. Uh, the shoulder armor, not that much, but it's still there. And the the hands, the arms, the hands as well. The uh, waist piece, and there's a sticker over here. The legs as well there's details and indents everywhere and the feet and the back as well as you can see there's details at the the bottom side or the back of the cockpit area really really nicely detailed and a sticker over here. Uh, there are two stickers at the back. <clears throat> so really nicely detailed. And I believe if you have a little bit of panel lining, a little bit of painting, you can bring up the details much, much more better. Alright, so in terms of accessories, it comes with a sniper rifle. And if I'm correct, it's a 76mm sniper rifle that Curse Weber uses in its uh, uh, battles with Amalgam mobile uh, arm slaves as well. And you can actually store this uh, weapon as well. And how you can do that is by first removing the hand plate armor, removing the gun later on, change the configuration of the scope to the side right here and the sniper and the stand right here you can actually change it to for, for usage on the ground or something but if you want to store it, take it off, store it like so, fold this piece up and over like so and this peg right here will peg in to the back over here like so 
This comes with the GECB 40mm rifle that is I believe the a standard issue rifle for the material arm um, slave units and how you can fit it back in is use a multi-purpose hand, it actually comes with two pairs of hands, uh, one of them is the multi-purpose hand and put the rifle there, cover it back up with the hand cover and you're done and it's able and ready for deployment the other pairs of hands it comes with is the holding hands for the weapons like so so really nicely looking really good looking in terms of poses as well well other than projectile firing weapons it also comes with a, a mono molecular cutter and also and also a anti-tank dagger at back. Try my best to let to show it to y'all. Like so, an anti-tank dagger which both can be held with the same multi-purpose hand. And again, just remove the hand cover, remove the weapon, put the weapon onto the hand as well and the, the width of the uh, handle is just enough so if you put the hand cover back on it looks like this which is puny in comparison to the whole arm slave as well as eh? the arm slave can also hold its mono monomolecular cutter that comes with a with a sheath which can actually store the monomolecular cutter as well looking really good in terms of weapons, it comes with a, I believe it's called the AWS 2000, the Grassman Litcher, but I will continue calling it the AWS 2000. And this is just like a semi uh, SMG style of weapon, and it can be trans, uh, it can be changed to a different form, which is the assault carbine version. Uh, first, by putting the barrel at the front, like so. The top part of the handle. Uh, like so of the gun like so and finishing off by putting a sort of like a grenade launcher weapon at the bottom of the weapon like so so a really nice looking and nicely detailed weapon and you can hold it and the assault and the guns back can hold it as well like so it's using its main purpose I uh, mean multi-purpose hands you can hold on to the AWS 2000 really nicely as well <coughs> <coughs> looking really good and nicely detailed ready for deployment the guns back can store weapons as well but it's best if you want to store them uh, remove the sniper rifle off and you have two choices of connectors for the back skirt armor which is this this is the d3 or d7 version of the uh of the connector piece at the back that actually holds the sheath and you can actually remove the sheath as well uh, kind of obvious, yeah. You can remove the sheath and actually sheath the mono molecular cutter like so. There is also a J3 version of the connector piece, uh, also connects to the back, and the whole size is smaller to actually accommodate for the the barrel width version of the uh, assault rifle. The 40 millimeter rifle and there's a small snap right here when you clip it on removing the connector piece of the sheet and you may notice that there is a peg right here and this peg can be connected to either side of the uh, leg armor like so or you can connect it to the back of the uh, guns back like so and you can remove it and well use it for deployment like so and it holds on to the sheath weapon very nicely by friction the guns bag also comes with extra parts for 
I don't know what reason, maybe broke some of them and you want to change them and some extra polycaps as well. So uh, really quickly, the articulation for the M9 guns back, 360 head, uh, you can move this piece forward, maybe to uh, uh, remind or to reminisce about the, or uh, throw back a reference to the pose that the arm stays have when it's in storage mode. The torso has a ball joint at the top, ball joint at the bottom as well, a ball joint in the shoulder, so you can 360 move you can move the shoulder 360 uh, the shoulder armor can move up there is an articulation at the shoulder armor uh, arms go up this high bar bicep swivel 360 a double jointed elbow a ball joint hand same for the other arms as well hips can go up like so double jointed go up go out like so, uh, swivel in the legs by this much before hitting the other armor. Uh, a joint at the bottom, at the bottom of the shins, like so. A little ankle pivot, a little ball joint. I believe no, there's no ball joint per se. Um, but there is a flip flop action at the toes. There's a small little joint that goes up and down like so for the ankle guard and a articulation for this piece which I have no idea what it's for. A gimmick for the articulation is that um, you can actually pull the legs down a bit and it's very minuscule but you can see this, this part drops down a bit. I can show you again. This is normal. This is after getting the drop down method and actually gives a little bit of more articulation uh, as well like if you're moving the leg straight up so this is uh, with the gimmick without the gimmick it can go this much before hitting the torso a small difference but well appreciated and this is what I was talking about when it's in storage mode the arm sleeve will be on its back uh, maybe this may not be totally accurate but it's a really nice gimmick or a uh, piece nice piece of articulation that it has for the M9 guns back to, to to use all right very quickly with the uh, other robot damashis that I have this is the robot damashis that I have for the full metal panic line of uh, See for for full metal panic line, so I have the from the right side the guns back Melissa Mao the Arbalest the first version of the Arbalest the Coral the Savage the Coral Eye and the Falk and as you can see the guns back M9 guns back 160 skill model kit does not scale too well with the Robert Damashi version maybe with squatting it could scale well but uh, for for my my tastes it's it doesn't scale too nicely. And like I've said before, the details uh, in comparison with the Robert Damashi version, there's much, much more dense amounts of details on the model kit version of the guns back then, the Robert Damashi version. But in terms of quality, this guy triumphs, definitely. So uh, a really nice, uh, so a quick overview, or rather a, um, a, a verdict of this guy uh, and the price point. I got this guy for 2260 yen, 2260 yen, and 2900 yen for the sh including which the the cheapest shipping uh, Army Army provides, and it's kind of worth it. 30 to 35 dollars, 25 to 30 dollars for the for the US audiences. It's it's very worth it. Um, the, in terms of like a model kit skill, like uh, for quality for model skill for model kits, it's very nice. The articulations a lot. There's a lot of articulation, a lot of details, and a lot of weapons as well. Like as you can see, it does a squatting pose really nicely as well, and holds the weapons really tightly. I don't see any bad points other than being a model kit. And as you know, with model kits, with the longer time you play with them, the more loose it gets. And that's the problem with any other Gundam model kit. Uh, if you don't play with, with it excessively, you display it nicely. I don't see a reason why you shouldn't get this kit. Uh, 
like to get it in your collection you can even get this kit to maybe paint it up or, or increase its panel lines but I believe it may or at this point of time with its amount of relevancy it may be too expensive to do so so this is pretty much it for my review of the M9 guns bag do I recommend it yes definitely uh, especially for model kit fans uh, or who or somebody who wants a more cheaper alternative than the Robert Damashi versions of the uh, guns bag so this is the end thank you all for watching hope this helps really and uh, have a nice day see ya